गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज मीनल पाटिल फ्रॉम जैन कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड वी आर योर फॉर द पाइथन एप्लीकेशन प्रोग्रामिंग क्लास इन द प्रीवियस क्लासेज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अप टू द चैप्टर ऑफ स्ट्रिंग्स एंड टूडे वी कम एंड डील विथ लिस लिस इन पाइथन यू माइट आव ऑलरेडी हर्ड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ अरेज इन योर सी प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज वेर इन you use that array data structure in order to save homogeneous data type wherein all the elements are of the same type so in lists in python you will see that it's a similar structure the only difference is that it is heterogeneous now what do we mean by a list as you can see it's a sequence of values that can be of any type when i say any type it means the data type the data type can be an integer it could be a string or it could be another list in itself and then whatever values we have in the list are called as elements or items ways to create a list you can just check either we say give the name of the list equal to and give a parenthesis with the list function or we initialize along with its values when you put empty square brackets it means an empty list when you have the characters your list equal to so whenever it's a string you always enclose it in a single quote just now i told you regarding the heterogeneous data type if you can look at this example we have a string we have a floating point value we have an integer and we have another list all these items are part of this outer list that we have here so when it comes to putting the syntax of a list this is how you have it wherein you have the expression and then empty list is expressed as empty square brackets let us move on lists are mutable now what do we mean by mutable we had seen that whenever you are able to change the order of items or reassign the items in a list this is what we mean by mutable point to note here we have already discussed that string data type are an immutable type wherein you can't reassign any character in the string so if you look at this example here we have taken numbers which is a list which contains 16 and 7 we know that this is how we do indexing of a list where indexing starts at 0 so here you are trying to assign the first index as value 9 that is you are trying to modify whatever is there in first index position earlier it was 7 you are modifying and reassigning it to 9 then when you go ahead and print the list this is the output that you get lists are heterogeneous as i mentioned so you can see another example wherein we are having data types of different sorts some of the important points to note here index value starts at 0 only integer expression can be used as index you cannot use a floating point value to denote an index here i can't say i call it as numbers of 1.5 either it should be 0 or it should be 1 and so on right numbers if you try to read or write any element that does not exist you get an index error that is if you, if i try to access your numbers of 2 it would definitely give me an index error because this list contains only two elements if an index has negative value it counts backward from the end of list i shall elaborate more on this like in python you have a special feature where you can access this list even from the right end generally we access arrays from the left end only but in python you are even allowed to access it from the right end coming ahead the in operator on list here you can see we have worked with in operator earlier also which checks the existence on the left hand side which is there in the right hand side of the data type that you are checking it with and it only returns true or false so if you look at here i have a list called names which contains these three elements i am checking the existence of this particular name neha in this list called names and it says true because i have it existing in the list next time next time trying to check the name ananya in this list even though it exists in the list here the answer it gives me is false what's the reason we all know that python is case sensitive right so this is the point we need to be careful about even though this exists here it's case sensitive here you have a capital here a and the letter that you're checking has a small case 
when it comes to traversing a list here is an example where i have given you that a is a list it contains all these elements when you refer to it using positive indexing a of 0 would refer to 5 a of 1 to 9 and so on when it comes to negative indexing it starts from the right end and you always start with minus 1 so it comes on minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and minus 5 so two examples given here when you refer to positive indexing it refers like this when it's negative indices you're starting from the right end that's the reason the value being highlighted is 15. when it comes to list operations we see two operations today one is the plus which is used for concatenation and asterisk which repeats a list given number of times so if you look at this example you can see i have two lists a and b and then this is how you concatenate one thing to remember during concatenation is the data types on both the sides of the plus operator should be same that is if you are having a list it should have a list if you are using it on a string both the uh, concatenation things data type that you have should be string so finally you are printing it and this is the result of concatenation it just places it side by side right when it comes to the asterisk operator whatever list you are having whatever number of times you have specified here that many times the elements of the list get repeated so since the only element is zero here it is being repeated for four times here i have a list which contains three elements and you are doing asterisk three so this one two three elements are being repeated three times when it comes to the list functions these are the different functions you have on the list so length you know it tells me the number of elements in the list max it gives me among the available values in the list which you have passed as argument this l is nothing but the name of your list which you pass as argument it returns the maximum value when you say max of l when you say minimum l it gives you the minimum value that is available on the list when you say sum and pass the list it sums up all the elements that are available on that list and if you want to sort it in ascending order the function that you use is sorted and pass the list name as argument the next and most important concept that we come across is list slicing so if you know you have heard the word slicing say for example i want a slice of cake which means from the existing cake you just want a part of it right on the same lines when it comes to a list we see that we have an entire list being defined but then there are uh, situations wherein you just want a part of it so this is the syntax you can see when it comes to list slicing you name the list whatever the name of the list i and j i is referring to the index of the starting point for from which you want to retrieve the values and it includes it that is it is inclusive of this i value that you give j value indicates the index value of the ending point where the ending point element whatever you have is not reflected in the list it is excluded what do we mean by this if you take this m is a list i have the five elements in the list you are talking how i positively index it these are the negative indexing when i want to refer to a particular element so if you can look at this this is the name of the list according to your syntax this is the starting point this is the ending point when i say it starts at one that means the indexing value where it should start is one so it includes the element eight it should end at three but when i say end at three you know that it is excluded so it takes only elements in the index position one and two the index element at index position three is not highlighted in the list so what we have as output here is the elements 8 and 1. Looking at the next example further, here we have not mentioned the starting point. So by default it takes from the beginning of list. And we have mentioned the indexed ending point as 2, so it goes up to index 1. So the output you get is 7 and 8. If you look at this example, we have not taken the ending point, which means that it should go up to end of list. So starting point you have mentioned is the index 2. And so you know that index is 2 from here up to the end. So all the elements it reflects is 1 to 4. If in case you are using negative indexing here, I have not mentioned the starting point, which means it takes from the starting of list. But then ending point you have mentioned is minus 1, and you know that minus 1 refers to this element, 1 less than that. We know that this particular thing is excluded, so the output you get is 7, 8, 1, and 2. These are the various list methods that we come across list slicing we have seen now it comes to the methods when it comes to the methods these are the different methods available on the list right so just to uh, elaborate it with an example few of the important ones that we frequently come across are one is the append method extend method and the insert method
these all are almost on the same lines with a little difference between all the three like i have taken a list called colors wherein i have red blue green and orange when i use the method extend so you are applying on the list of colors and what is the parameter that you are passing whenever you are using the method extend it is necessary to always pass a list you can't pass a single item whenever you talk of extend it should be a list so in this list i have two items so you can see the output when you now try to print colors it has extended that is added all these two at the end and extended the list using these two elements when you talk of append you always append a single value so here you are giving it as the parameter whatever element you have passed as parameter when it comes to append it always adds it to the end of list so whenever i want to add a single value to the end of list the function method that i will be using is append when it comes to extend i am adding more than one value but then argument you pass as a list now when i want to insert it at a particular position right now we have seen that it is appending at the end extending also from the end of list but when you want to insert it at a particular position the method that you come across is insert so you have a list name dot the method name wherein you pass the position this is the index value where you want to insert this particular element so in your existing list of colors this is the updated list which we have taken here you would see that at index position 2 that is 0 1 2 yellow has been updated and the remaining elements are just pushed further okay. so list methods are very useful so if you look at this these are all the number of methods available where you can append you can remove all the elements you can count which is similar to your length function where you are counting the number of elements but here when you say count it is the number of occurrences of v in list l that is uh, count the particular occurrence of elements say if i want to count how many number of phi's occur in the list then i have to pa pass five as an argument index value will return me the index of a particular element which you want to find out pop is like your pop function on the stack which will remove the last element from the list so you don't pass any parameters by default it happens to be the last element when you say remove you are removing a particular element and you are passing the element as an argument when you say reverse whatever is the order of your list it reverses the order of the elements in the list l if i want to sort the list in ascending order the method i would use is list name dot sort which by default sorts it in ascending order but in case you want a descending order what you use is reverse equal to true in the parameter which would give you the list in sorted order so Having seen, we have discussed a few important things regarding the list concept. Based on this, I want you to solve the exercise which I have given further. The answers to which I shall reveal in my next class. I want you to go through this video carefully. Most of the important concepts being discussed with respect to a list. For any queries, you can always text me. And we meet again for tomorrow's class at 10.20. Thank you.